12 years after a parasitic fungus invades the earth, scientists find a group of children who haven't turned into zombies and decide to use them as guinea pigs to produce a vaccine that will save humanity. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2016 movie, The Girl with All the Gifts. In a post-apocalyptic world devastated by zombies, hybrid children live like rats in laboratories and are only allowed out of their cells to study. When they arrive at the classroom, Melanie and the other wheelchair-bound youngsters are preparing for their chemistry lesson, which will be taught by Miss Helen, but Melanie interrupts her teacher and asks her to read a story. Even though they are only children, all the soldiers on that military base have been trained to treat them only as guinea pigs and Helen is the only one who offers them the slightest affection. As a result, they all feel a deep affection for their teacher. After class, the young people are taken back to their cells and the guards keep their guns pointed at them the whole time, until the door is locked. Three times a day, the children are fed maggots and insects and, at least once a day, Melanie is visited by Dr. Caldwell. That day, the doctor gives the girl a riddle to try and solve and tells her that there is a cat trapped inside a closed box, which could be eliminated or alive. The question is, how would Melanie find out if the cat is alive or eliminated without opening the box? Feeling challenged by the riddle, the girl says she'll think about it and soon give her answer. Caldwell then asks Melanie to say a number from 1 to 20 and she chooses 13. The next day, when she arrives in class, Melanie notices that Kenny, the boy from cell 13, hasn't gone to class and begins to suspect that, through her fault, something bad may have happened to him. Seeing that the students are worried about their missing classmate, Helen asks them to create a story and frees them from their chains so that they can write it. When everyone has finished their work, Melanie offers to read her tale aloud and tells of a beautiful woman who was walking in the forest when she was attacked by a giant. The creature wanted to devour her and, despite the woman's efforts to escape, the monster was stronger and managed to capture its prey. However, when the giant was about to feed on her, a girl appeared and freed the woman from the monster's clutches. After that, they became like mother and daughter and lived happily ever after. On hearing this story, the teacher becomes emotional and starts to cry. Concerned for the woman, Melanie apologizes for having upset her, but Helen walks over to her and rubs her head affectionately. Just then, Sergeant Eddie bursts into the room and fights with the teacher for having touched one of those monsters. To remind her that those children are nothing but freaks, he rubs the skin of his arm to spread his body odor and approaches one of the boys. Smelling human flesh, the boy and his classmates lose control and try to devour Eddie. Furious, Helen orders the man out of her class and continues as normal. When she is taken back to her cell, Melanie meets the sergeant again and says that if she had a box to contain all the evils in the world, she would lock him inside. As punishment for what she has just said, Melanie is stuck in her chair unable to move. That evening, Helen goes to visit the girl and is shocked to discover that she has been handcuffed all day. Immediately, the woman starts shouting for the guard's help, but no one answers. So she decides to open the cell herself and free her student. When she smells the woman, Melanie starts to lose control, but tries to hold it together and asks her to move away. Suddenly, the girl loses control and tries to bite her teacher, but Helen manages to get out of the cell in time and asks for forgiveness for having provoked the whole thing. The next morning, Melanie receives another visit from Dr. Caldwell and the woman asks her to give her a new number. This time, the girl chooses her own door number, even though she knows that something terrible could happen to her. Minutes later, when the guards show up to take the children to class, Melanie takes her seat as usual, but receives the news that this time she won't be joining her other classmates. For the first time, the young woman is taken outside the military base and sees hundreds of zombies trying to break down the metal fences protecting the installation. Eddie then takes her to Dr. Caldwell's laboratory and the girl is given a sedative. When Melanie blacks out, the doctor and her assistant release her from the wheelchair and place the girl's body on a stretcher to begin the experiments. At that moment, Helen appears and says that she will no longer go along with this. Caldwell then talks calmly to the teacher and manages to convince her to drop the extinguisher. The doctor quickly attacks her with pepper spray and orders her assistant to call security. Before Helen is taken away, the doctor apologizes for having to do this and says that she respects the teacher's feelings, but Melanie is the main ingredient for the vaccine she is developing and needs to be sacrificed in order to save thousands of lives. Just then, the security alarm sounds, indicating that the zombies have managed to break into the base. Then, while locking the windows, the assistant becomes the victim of an attack and the doctor rushes to help her get rid of the monsters. While attacking those creatures, Caldwell ends up cutting her hand and has to flee because her assistant is already transforming. As Melanie is half zombie, she is not attacked by the creatures and, with the help of a scalpel, manages to free herself from the stretcher. She then runs out of the tent and finds the soldiers fighting a bloody war. Seeing two guards attacking Helen, the girl becomes enraged and bites them on the neck. 
Afterwards, Melanie collapses and her teacher carries her out of the war zone. Just as the woman was about to be devoured by a horde of zombies, an army tank appears and they both manage to hitch a ride far away from the military base. On reaching a safe place, the sergeant realizes that Melanie is also in the vehicle and prepares to shoot her. However, Helen uses her body to form a shield and protect the girl. She then opens the door so that Melanie can escape. For the first time in her life, the young woman is free and has no idea what to do with her freedom. So Melanie sits down on the lawn and Dr. Caldwell says she needs the guinea pig alive to carry out her experiments. When her teacher approaches, Melanie says that she has done something very bad and feels bad for having bitten the soldiers. Faced with this new crisis, Eddie draws up a new plan of action and says that the group will pay a visit to the nearest military barracks for supplies. Upon hearing this, Helen asks about the base's employees and the sergeant says that they are already presumed eliminated. As for the children, they'll be fine, because those creatures they call the hungry ones don't attack their fellow human beings. Throughout the journey, Melanie is trapped in the outer seat of the car so as not to risk attacking a member of the team. On the way, the group stops at a riverbank to collect water, only to be surprised by the arrival of some zombies. While the soldiers try to contain the attack, Helen rushes to free Melanie and takes her into the vehicle to hide. During the battle, one of the soldiers is bitten on the arm and, moments before getting into the car, begins to transform. Sergeant Eddie immediately draws his gun and shoots his comrade in the head. Now that the survivors are safe, Helen explains the situation to Melanie and tells her that the hungry are infected by a parasitic fungus that can be transmitted through bodily fluids. So when those zombies bite someone, the other person is transformed too. Minutes later, they come out of hiding to continue their journey and Eddie realizes that, during the firefight, one of the bullets pierced the fuel tank. Therefore, the team will have to continue walking to London and, after a short break, they decide to enter the houses in search of food. The problem is that the entire perimeter is full of hungry ones, so they need to use a scent-blocking gel to avoid attracting their attention. What's more, they mustn't make any noise, as any kind of sudden movement could wake them up. Slowly, the small team manages to advance and suddenly they come across an infected woman pushing a baby carriage. At this point, they stop walking and stand still so as not to attract the creature's attention. However, Caldwell decides to walk over to the zombie to check what's inside that baby carriage and, when she removes the baby's blanket, she realizes that it has been devoured by a sinister rat. Frightened, the woman emits a sound capable of waking up some zombies. As they wake up, Eddie and Kieran shoot them in the head and the small group must hurry before all the monsters wake up at once and join forces to attack them. After walking for a few minutes, they find an abandoned warehouse and hide inside. The plan is to use the place as a shelter to rest, but first they need to check that there are no aberrations inside. So, while Helen and the soldiers search the perimeter, Dr. Caldwell keeps an eye on Melanie. Since she can't leave, the girl takes the opportunity to investigate her past and asks the doctor to tell her where she came from. The woman then says that Sergeant Eddie and other soldiers used to visit certain towns during their rescue missions. On one of these trips, they came across something curious. In a hospital, there were infected newborn babies, but unlike all the other hungry ones, these babies were able to think and interact with their environment, acting like normal people. The newborns were found in a maternity hospital next to their mothers, but their bellies were torn open and their organs had been devoured from the inside. Dr. Caldwell's theory is that those mothers were infected together, in a single incident, and the embryos they were carrying contracted the infection through the placenta. Then, when their bodies were well developed, they devoured their mother's abdomens to get out. Hearing this story, Melanie understands why Caldwell wants to use her as a guinea pig to create a vaccine. Meanwhile, Helen is walking through the facility when she comes across a zombie in chains and immediately eliminates it. After the sweep, the group comes to the conclusion that the shelter is safe and decides to take a break to rest. That night, while everyone is asleep, the teacher gives Melanie clean clothes and promises that in the morning she will try to find food for her. However, at dawn, Eddie realizes that the outskirts of the building are crawling with zombies, so they won't be able to leave. So Melanie offers to go outside and arrange a distraction to lure the hungry away. Since they have no other option, Eddie decides to let her go and, after devouring a feline she found nearby, the young woman enters a house where she finds a dog. She then carries the dog on her lap and uses it as bait to lure the zombies away. In this way, the group manages to escape alive and walks a few more kilometers until they come across a new horde of hungry ones. Immediately, they go up to the terrace of a building to make it easier to see and plan their escape. Once again, Melanie offers to go ahead and find a safe route. This time, she relies on a radio to communicate with the rest of the team. Through the girl's guidance, Eddie and the others manage to cross safely and, at a certain point along the way, 
Caldwell finds spores of the fungus ready to release new particles and infect people through the air. Knowing that they are facing a serious threat, the group picks up their pace and continues walking until they come across an entire tower full of sporangia that form a structure similar to a giant tree. The doctor then says that the reason there are no zombies there is because the fungus has already consumed all their brains and has now reached the reproduction stage. When she analyzes the structure, Caldwell finds hundreds of sporangia and says that if they open up, it will be the end of the world. Just ahead, Eddie finds a mobile laboratory and the doctor shows him how to open the doors. The installation is shielded and 100% protected. What's more, it runs on sunlight so that it is always active. Upon entering the laboratory, Helen starts looking for food while Eddie tries to communicate with the military barracks. However, the man gets no response and has to fix the motor so that the installation can move. Meanwhile, Kieran offers to go out in search of supplies and Melanie reveals that she also needs to go out hunting as she is getting hungry. After eating a pigeon, she falls asleep again and when she wakes up, she goes to investigate what's inside that building. To her surprise, the girl finds a group of wild children hiding there. Those youngsters are also hybrids, but they have survived on their own since birth, so they don't know how to communicate with other humans. Suddenly, the whole group comes out of hiding and Melanie soon begins to suspect that they are going after Kieran. She quickly returns to the base to ask for help and informs them that the soldier is in danger. At this point, Eddie tries to contact his partner, but he doesn't answer as he has just removed his equipment to get under the gates of a store in search of food. Just as the sergeant was about to leave to look for Kieran, they manage to contact the barracks and Eddie confirms his position, but discovers that all the bases are being invaded. With no hope of being rescued, the group goes after the soldier and Melanie uses her keen sense of smell to track him down. While eating, Kieran is surprised by the arrival of a child who uses a rat to lure him in, because she believes that all humans feed on living creatures. In an attempt to help the girl, he approaches and falls into the trap. The man is quickly attacked by another child from the group and ends up being eaten alive by the hungry youngsters. When the group finally find him, only the soldiers' remains are scattered on the ground and Melanie soon realizes that, like Kieran, they too have fallen into a trap. Determined to protect Helen and Eddie, the girl tries to communicate with the children and asks the sergeant not to shoot any of them, because just like them, these youngsters are also just trying to survive. Alone, the girl faces the savages and challenges the leader of the gang. At that moment, they start a duel and Melanie uses her handcuffs to bind the boy's wrists. She then uses a baseball bat to hit him several times on the head, until the boy is eliminated. After this show of strength, Melanie asks her friends not to look at the other children and pretend to be afraid of her. The girl's plan is to make the others think that those humans are her prey and, if the children try to steal her food, Melanie will attack them. The trio quickly return to the mobile lab and find Dr. Caldwell wearing an oxygen mask. Not understanding what is going on, Helen tries to argue, but Melanie soon realizes that the doctor has used sleeping gas to put them out. Since cutting her hand at the military base, the wound has only gotten worse and she discovered that she had been infected by it. Now that she is about to perish, Caldwell decides to finish her research, but she needs Melanie to be her guinea pig and Helen would never agree to that. When she turns around again, she sees Melanie standing right in front of her and discovers that the girl has not been affected by the gas, as the fungus in her body metabolizes the oxygen for her. As a last resort, Caldwell uses emotional blackmail to try to convince the girl to be her guinea pig and says that if Melanie doesn't help her find a cure, Helen and all the other humans who don't belong to the second generation of infected will turn into zombies. However, Melanie doesn't think it's right that she and the other children need to perish so that adults can live, so she refuses to donate her brain to the research. The young woman then makes a drastic decision and, after picking up a box of matches, asks the doctor not to leave the laboratory, as she will be safe there. However, Caldwell ignores her and goes after the girl. Melanie quickly makes her way to the tower surrounded by the fungal spores. As she tries to reach it, the doctor is surrounded by hungry children and eaten alive. Upon arriving at the tower, the girl lights a match and sets fire to the parched bodies of the deceased hosts of the parasite that has turned all of humanity into zombies. According to Caldwell, these sporangia cannot be opened manually, but respond to external stimuli such as humidity and heat. As a result, the fire can cause them to explode and small spores of the fungus are released into the air. Now, zombies are no longer the only threat, as anyone who breathes in those particles will be infected. On the way back to the lab, Melanie meets the sergeant and regrets the fact that Eddie left the chamber, as she didn't want him to get hurt. When he realizes what has happened, the man despairs and says he doesn't want to become a hungry man, so he begs Melanie to shoot him in the head. Out of compassion, the girl waits patiently until Eddie is completely transformed and eliminates him, as he had requested. Minutes later, Helen wakes up and gets up to look for Melanie. 
However, before the woman can leave the laboratory, she spots the spores flying in the air and the young woman is at the door to prevent her teacher from leaving and becoming infected, at which point they realize that they only have each other. A few days later, Melanie meets the other young people who lived with her on the military base and the classmates join together to attend Helen's classes. In addition to them, feral children are also invited to join the class and Melanie hopes that they will soon learn to live in society. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.